Look, another story we got into yesterday in a big way, or in fact, over the last, uh, all of the, this week, is a Law Society report, or Law Society Committee report, that recommends changes to the Law Practitioners Act, and in broad terms, I'll paint them like this, that the Law Society ceased to be the regulatory body for lawyers, that it become more like the police association, more like a union for lawyers or the advocates for lawyers, and the disciplining of the and regulation of the legal profession uh, be vested in a new entity, and that that entity have it at its very core as fundamental to its operation, not the maintenance of justice and equality before the law, but the implementation and honouring of the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi. And we spoke to Ron Patterson, who chaired the group that came up with this report in Australia yesterday, and Ron said, I asked him what the principles were, and he said, I'm sure they're written down somewhere. We've had quite some reaction to that story and our highlighting of it. And I thought one person who might be interesting to talk to in this context would be a former or a past president of the New Zealand Law, or chair, president or chair, I'm not sure which, of the New Zealand Law Society, Judith Collins, MP for, National MP for Papakura, and she joins us now. Judith, welcome to the program. Thanks for coming on. Oh, thank you, Sean. I just need to correct you a little bit. I was mm. vice president of New Zealand Law Society, president yeah. of Auckland. That's right, Auckland Society. Law, the, law Society. In the, in the days when... In the days, actually, when Auckland District Law Society ran its own complaints um, That's right. service, and, yeah. and I was on a, a committee member for many years, and yeah. um, and now it looks like New Zealand Law Society is going to give up all of that and give it to yet another government agency. Yeah. Look, I, I first want to go back to the very fundamentals of that. That would seem to me, we put aside the details of the treaty for the moment, that's a big change, isn't it? Well, it is. It's a huge change. And on that basis, I expect that the Law Society, New Zealand Law Society membership would no longer be compulsory uh, for lawyers. I have to also state I am a member of New Zealand Law Society mm. for my $1,700 that I pay um, as being a barrister. Um, the, uh, I have to ask what, what was the point of that? It was simply going to be like the police association become a union. Um, I also think it's, it's, uh, it, it was an extremely interesting result from that report that, I mean, lawyers are not uh, government employees. Lawyers do have certain um, obligations and powers, but none of them like those exercised by New Zealand police officers. So it's it, I thought it was quite extraordinary and... And also and lawyers are not signatories and the Law Society is not a signatory to the Treaty of Waitangi and has no um, obligations no, it's underneath it. It is certainly not. And not only that, but lawyers who wish to practice in any way or even to maintain a practicing certificate have to be members of it and pay fees. It is not funded by the Crown or the taxpayer. It is funded by lawyers and and we don't get a choice in being members if we want to maintain our practicing yeah. uh, certificates. So, in fact, so, it's so in fact, what, what, what this report recommends is that the Law Society give up a certain independence of the profession by allowing the government to create a regulatory body for lawyers. It is actually a kind of surrender to some form of government control. It is certainly not something that we would have thought was appropriate um, when I was on the board of the Law, New Zealand Law Society or its vice president. It, it is um, exactly what you've said. It's a, it's a surrender of that. And I note that the board that would be in charge of regulating lawyers would be appointed by the Minister of Justice. Um, wow. That's... That again is, uh, I mean, I've had a look at the summary of the report and I thought that was an extraordinary thing for a body that is supposed to be very much, and that always has been, about the independence of lawyers to be able to practice and to stand up against the Crown 
um, or for the Crown, whichever. But so this, let's the put the treaty stuff aside, mm -hmm. Judith, and I hadn't thought yep. about it as conceptually as this. Mm. This allows the government to exercise some form of control, and we actually the treaty is, is the example of it. This would allow the government to exercise coercive control because it is the regulator or appoints the regulator over the legal profession in New Zealand. Yes, well, that's what it says in the executive summary. It says the Minister of Justice would appoint them after, obviously recommendations of some yet another board well let's wake up to this this the new zealand law society and lawyers who are not employed by the government should not in my opinion be, be subject to um, government sub controls no no i mean that's the point and, and i know this is going to sound like goldwin's law i have a young man who's just graduated with a law degree and one of the last highest level papers he did was to look at the legal system in pre-war nazi germany Mm -hmm. and how it worked and how the judiciary and how some of the crazy lawyers the Nazis got through past it. And he put it out it's dead because the government took control of the legal profession and its regulation. Well, it, it, we don't want to draw too long. No, no, we don't. But, but I'm is, just saying, this, is, when I look at it, we take away the treaty stuff. At the moment, you are a self-regulating governing body and you're voting... Or, or this paper suggests that you should stop being that. Yeah. Well, what it does, this paper, this, this, if it was taken up by the government or hopefully our government in October, then that would mean that the government would be imposing this and mm. what this paper would suggest is that New Zealand Law Society would go along with it. Now, that seems to me extraordinary and it's not something that I would ever recommend to any government that we end up doing things like that because I think that has a very chilling effect on the ability of lawyers to prosecute cases against governments. Mm, that's a and, good point. Um, well, just, well, you think about some of the cases that have happened over the years where lawyers have taken cases with clients against government uh, agencies yeah. and against governments. Remember, go, way, way back, way even before our days, um, Sean Fitzgerald, the Stuart yep. and Muldoon case, yep. where a public server took a case against Rob Muldoon, the then Prime Minister, and won. Can you just imagine the chilling effect of now you're going to be so regulated? So it blurs by the line the between the judiciary and the executive, doesn't it? Quite. I think that's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, and, and then, then we get to the point of well, if the lawyers decide or, or the government decides to go along with this, well, what's the point of the New Zealand Law Society? Should it be yeah. still a compulsory membership yeah. uh, for something that is essentially then going to be not much more than a trade union? All right. And I think the answer has to be no to that. So yeah. I see this as a gutting of the legal profession, a gutting of the New Zealand Law Society, and um, doing exactly to the New Zealand Law Society what was done to the Auckland District Law Society and other uh, districts yeah. when the 2006 Act was brought in. Yeah. Judith, also, the treaty seems to loom large in this, and the new regulatory body, which I guess could argue it was part of the Crown and therefore obligated under the terms of the treaty, says that the well, principles of the treaty would be in its administration, this new regulator would be one of its guiding principles, one of the most important things. And I just find it hard to see in a system of adjustment this which should give everyone equality before the law, how that's going to work. Well, I'm not quite sure how it would work. Uh, I do think that this is, again, um, something that's been set up by the New Zealand Law Society because it's had a few embarrassing moments recently. Um, around former president resigning and allegations of bullying and various other things and the sexual harassment of one particular lawyer um, at one particular law firm. Um, these are the sorts of things that I think has allowed it, let it lost its way and it's, it needs to come back and focus on its job, which is regulating lawyers and also providing some services for those lawyers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Judith, we look at this in context, another story we break today, the government considering 
a new regulatory body for the internet. A body which oh, might be yeah. able to say what you can... And the Department of Internal Affairs will release this discussion document formally at 2 o'clock this morning. We broke the embargo this morning with Jonathan Ayling. But basically it says, oh, the internet's the Wild West. Companies like, oh, the platform should be regulated somehow. Um, and right. we would create a new censorship body to keep an eye on all the bad people on the internet. Yeah, I just... It, it, Beggars belief that freedom of speech can be just sort of regulated like this. And I know that people are often offended by things on the internet and possibly even on the platform and various other media. Well, I would, I'm obviously offended by a lot of things that have been said about me in media of all sorts, including mainstream media. I'd say I more often in legacy or mainstream media, Judith. Well, exactly. And <laughs> and I have to say, Sean, I have never thought that we should regulate them for being horrible occasionally, you know. Yeah, you I must admit, you're someone of always, the, you've always taken your bumps, yeah, or your lumps. Yeah, well, yeah. the thing is, is that um, people always see through eventually, and, and I think, too, is that that's why you have broadcasting standards, but oh. the internet. Well, well, I, I, have to, I have to fill you in on something. I got a letter yesterday from Mikey Ch uh, Sherman. My oh, yes. associate accreditation oh. has been withdrawn as of April the 30th. And uh, I do not now qualify to be an associate member of the press gallery because my organisation is not a member of the Media Council, which is, of course, a completely voluntary private sector organisation. And nor am I a member, though Mikey got that wrong, of the Broadcasting Standards Authority. Well, I cannot be subject to the Broadcasting Standards Authority because I don't broadcast. But that means I'm not allowed to be accredited to the Press Gallery, according to new rules that the Press Gallery promulgated in the last month or so. Mm. Well, I must say, I've often been offended by some of the things Mikey Sherman's said about me on, on media. Um, but would you, would look, you argue um, if I, I applied to the Speaker, would, would you support me and Ben? Because apparently I'm allowed yes, to I go would. straight to the Speaker. All right. Oh, I I'll hold you to you, that. Actually, because I, I find that just offensive. And I, I don't understand why people who benefit so much from free speech should then try and not make sure that other people can also benefit from free speech. Anyway, look, I'm sure that will sort itself out and, <laughs> and I will certainly support you. Judith, Sean, can I, I say thank you? You have amazing. given me, while I was, I guess, concentrating on a little bit of Treaty of Waitangi outrage, yeah. Yeah. when you do mm -hmm. look at this big picture-wise, this is about lawyers ceding to government the right mm -hmm. to regulate their profession. And it really is, well, that's the big issue. The, the, the having been on complaints committees when I was with the Auckland District Law Society, when we were allowed to do this, those committees are composed of, of experienced lawyers who know what they're doing. And I see this as like what we're going to send this off to employees who may never have practiced law, who may never know what it is that they're doing, and certainly not at the senior level. And then, by the way, you're going to have a government appointed board on top of you yeah, and it's like the broadcasting the standard or standards authority oh, come on. half of them have never been bloody broadcasters and they're just a bunch of well, it, political sycophants yeah. yeah well well one might well think that but <laughs> i just think that that's, that's a lawyer you've got to be kidding me yeah <laughs> Judith, I thank you so much for your time. That was really interesting. Thank you for your time this morning and thank for you. your support in future. Judith Collins, the National Member for Papakura, former sorry, uh, Vice President of the New Zealand Law Society uh, uh, and was on the Disciplinary Committee for the Auckland District Law Society. So, look, gosh, everywhere we look right now on the platform, we're getting government overreach. A government that maybe in its final months is desperately flailing around looking for ways to exercise control over lawyers and journalists and motorists and anyone it can find to bend to its will.